Hi, and welcome back. So we're continuing on our quest to look at the performance of a file server, Windows 2008 file server. Um, and we've prepared some data, but I thought there was one thing I think that we need to just cover just to make sure that we've got it clear in our minds about SMB messages. We have an application at the top on the left hand side. It's passing data across an API to the operating system. The file redirection mechanism in the operating system encapsulates that data in an SMB packet, sends it down the protocol stack across to the server. The headers get stripped off and the data is eventually passed to the file server. So let's just think a bit further about the actual SMB messages. We can just have a single TCP segment that contains a whole SMB message, including the data, which is the example we see at the top of this slide. Alternatively, we can have an SMB message that, because of the amount of data that's being returned, that message has to be split across multiple TCP segments. And that's the example we see in the lower portion of this slide. So those are two possibilities, but we have further possibilities. We could have one TCP segment, such as this one here, that has multiple SMB messages within it. Alternatively, we could have, say, three SMB messages, the headers of which are in the first TCP segment, but the data is actually split across further TCP segments. So we have lots of variations here. So let's return to our spreadsheet. Um, one thing I've done while you've been away, I saved the spreadsheet in Excel format. Uh, I didn't make any changes. What I have to deal with is the issue of the multiple packets, multiple request packets, and multiple responses. Now, if I just use the information I have in front of me right now to sort this data, let's try that. So if we sort the data by session ID, tree ID, process ID, And finally, command sequence number. We sort that data. We get this warning because uh, Excel is, has noticed that we have mixtures of numbers and text stored in cells in one column. But we are going to ignore that warning. We get it twice because we've got two, two places where that happens. And now we've got everything sorted. And in the main, if you look at the uh, command sequence numbers, Everything actually looks okay here. So we have request response, request response, request response. Looks pretty good. And even where we have uh, perhaps multiple requests and responses, it will look okay. But the areas where we will have problems are areas where we have multiple requests and responses in one packet. So, for example, I happen to know that uh, 707, um, sorry, I'm picking up the wrong thing there, something like that. There's the 707 request. You can see we don't have any responses after it. Then we have a 708 request, and we don't have any responses after that either. But if we continue down the sheet, what we find is that we have both of those specified in one TCP segment, or actually it's spanning multiple TCP segments, but it's, it's a, a condition where basically we've put the headers of two SMB messages into one packet, and then all the data is spanning across multiple segments. Now the way I'm going to deal with the multiple responses in one packet and then not matching the requests is I'm going to look for the first response in the packet or even the first request in the packet actually if it was multiple uh, packets. 
So let's insert a column here. And I'm going to call that column first command sequence. Now to make things a bit easier for us to follow, I'm going to uh, hide these columns here. So let's hide those temporarily. I'm going to extend this slightly to give us a bit more run. Now I'm going to build up a formula here and I'm going to do it bit by bit so that you can see because it's, it's quite a complicated formula but um, it's not too difficult to follow. So the first thing is I want to know when I have a situation where I have multiple SMB messages in one packet and the way I'm going to check that is I'm going to look for a comma in this cell in this column over here. So the way I do that is I just use a find command. So I find comma in that cell there. In this case because it doesn't find it it gives an error. If we just come down here in this case where it has found it it's telling you that it's the fourth character of the cell. So that's telling you that the comma is at the fourth character of that cell. That's all very well but this isn't very useful but what we can do here is we can convert this into something a bit more useful into, into a logic condition. And the way we do that is we use the is error the is error function and uh, we simply wrap our find with the is error function. So now what we get is this condition where it says if I don't have a comma in the uh, cell to the right then I must have a single SMB message. So the condition I get is true. With true meaning I have a single SMB message. False means I've got multiple messages. So now we can use that condition with an if. So this is building quite nicely. So we have an if statement which says if I have a single SMB message in this packet then I want this sequence number here and if not I'm just going to, going to temporarily put in a zero just, just for demonstration purposes. So now if I copy that down you can see that wherever I haven't got the comma and I have a single SMB message in a packet I am picking up the first command sequence number. Down here I have the zero because I have this problem with the uh, or, or I have the comma in the, in the cell. So let's take this a bit further. Instead of having this zero what we're going to do is we're going to use another function called left. So I'm going to pick up the left hand side of that cell and temporarily I'm going to put in a value of 4. So if I copy that down now you see I'm picking up the 707 with the uh, because I'm taking the left hand side of this cell and I'm going for four characters. Now I could specify three here and of course I would then pick up just 707. The trouble with that is that when I get to when this number goes up to a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand uh, my formula is going to fail. So the way I overcome that is I have to use another find command. So in this case I replace this four character hard coded value with another find and I'm going to look for a comma again um, and I'm looking for it in this cell and it will give me the position but actually I want the position minus one for the actual character count for the counts for the characters I'm interested in so I enter minus one and we'll see if that works Okay, so you can see now that I'm picking up this first command sequence number. So let's copy that all the way down the sheet. So I need to uh, go back up to the top and I'll copy that down the sheet. That will copy just a little thing 
with um, Excel, it will copy down to the last position where it has to actually, where it hits value. So you can see where I was working here, it stops at that point. So what we have to do is we have to copy again to copy over those and copy down to the end of the sheet. So you can see I've now got that all the way to the end of the sheet. So that all looks good. Now I'm going to unhide the columns that I had. It's a bit wide. You can see the, this um, this whole sheet's getting rather large, <laughs> but uh, it will be worth it in the end. So I'm going to uh, put four more columns into here. So I do insert four columns. I'm going to move this column, the one that I just created, and move it over to there. I'm going to delete this one because that's now spare and I don't need it. I'm then going to take these headers, I'm going to copy those into here, and I'm going to just enter prefix these with the word first in each case. Because I've got the same issue uh, in these other columns. If I look at a point where I have multiple messages, such as this area here, if I look at session ID, for example, you can see I've got multiple session IDs, just like I had multiple sequence numbers. But luckily, our formula is general purpose enough to cover that. So what we can do is just copy this formula across. So I copy, copy, copy. And then I copy all of that down the sheet right to the bottom. So that gives me the first values in all of those cells. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sort similar to the one I did before, but I just need to change it slightly. And actually, I'm going to add in the additional. I want to do the full thing here because um, you might be dealing with multiple clients and multiple TCP client port numbers. So I'm going to add in the full detail, even though this is slight overkill for my situation. First session ID. We need the first tree ID, first process ID, and finally the first command sequence number. Now we sort. We get this warning again, skip the warning, and now that should have helped us. So we can see that everything looks OK here. We've got a find request, and then we've got a two segment response, and then we've got a create request here and a two segment response, and uh, there's multiple packets there. The ones that we were having problems with was this, um, for example, that uh, command sequence number 707. So let's go and have a look at that. So now we've fixed 707, but what we haven't done is fix 708. And once again, we've completely run out of time. So I'm going to deal with the issue of 708 in the next video. I'll see you soon.